Welcome to No Bills Fan Podcast. If you don't already, please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, anywhere you find your podcast. Don't forget, NumBillsFan.com has all of our content. Oh, shoot. I am back. Welcome to Numb Bills Fan Podcast. It is actually a big day for me. It's your host, David Palermo here. Um, so, yesterday was my very, 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 for you know, yesterday, I should say, today, this morning, was my very first time actually going to training camp for the Buffalo, well, on the sideline with the Buffalo Bills as a credential member of the media. So I was there on behalf, and this is Numb Bills Fan Podcast. Um, excuse me, as I burp. Um, yeah, so Numb Bills Fan Podcast, episode number 125. Day three of practice just wrapped up. I was there representing Grandstand Sports Network, which is hot. Drops on Monday. Check it out, grandstandsportsnetwork.com. Get there. It's a radio program that rolls all day. And things can happen for you. It's pretty cool. Good content. You got Rock Power Report, Cover One dot net has a you know that awesome analytics site. So that has a great, 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 great breakdown of plays for the Bills. I mean, you got NFL players on the team who who really respect that site from Eric Turner. So I'm really stoked to be a part of. This network that has good people, good podcasts. You got a Savers podcast, Beyond the Blade. I mean, you got people involved. Somehow they got me on the field with the press pass. So that tells you how serious they are. I had a great view today. Can't wait to get into it. Don't forget, I'm brought to you by Punch Drunk Sports, punchdrunksports.com. Three regular comedians that they they play out. They do the L.A. comedy store. They travel the world. Ari Shafir has a great Netflix special, Double Negative, right off of Netflix. Check it out. San Triple has a comedy album out now on iTunes. And also, Jason Tebow, you just caught him on the Red Zone Network. Awesome podcast. PunchDrunkSports.com, at Punch Drunk. We are the Bills podcast for the one Bills podcast that will cover the Bills for Punch Drunk Sports. You heard it here first. Your boy Dave will be on that shit. So here I am. Again, first day of camp. This podcast is quick, very informative. Expect a lot of these to drop, all right? So I don't know how long I'm going to go for, but I'll tell you, I'm going to be organic here and everything's all good. So look, things are real at camp. Tempo is a real thing. I said it last podcast. If you want the vibes for the first podcast or first day, don't be shy. Go back. Talk to Kevin. Talk, listen to me and Kevin Masada to talk about it. It is not the same information you've been picking up. Again, this is my opinion. This isn't everything you see on Twitter. I notice a couple things that might be different from other people. This is my perspective. So if you'd like, please check it out and, uh, you know, go back to numbillsfan.com or subscribe on iTunes if you don't. And go back to back episodes. There's some good stuff in there. There's an episode with the comedian Kevin Elliott. He has a, uh, a big affinity for the L.A. Rams. He's from L.A., lived there, team moved to St. Louis, moved back to L.A. You can see what it's like to have a team move, come back, get a different perspective, check it out. Just had Tim Avery on. We talked about what we expect for the season coming on. He was a couple podcasts ago, I believe 122. So um, check that out. Um, I'm very stoked. This year looks like things are together. Um, I'm over here and some media members talking, hey, this, this year feels right. This year feels right. And, and, and every year I'm sure you feel that. Um, but it really does feel right. There's a, there's a definite, even on day three, these coaches are yelling at these guys, let's go, let's go, let's go. And between drills, these guys are running hard. They're running after the play. They're, almost, they're actually doing things that I've never really seen much before, maybe out of my mind. Where usually when the play is over, the guy stops and then does whatever. Not dude gets back up and, and runs the play out, and then the secondary almost follows him or the linebackers and, and taps him up and he keeps going. And it's I like it because it's almost like in a way of getting like slow reps to get used to. Hey, keep the attack on, keep the attack on, keep the attack on, keep the attack on. So it's like it emphasizes ball security 
from the offense side of the ball and get the ball on the defense side of the ball. I know it sounds simple to people, but really I think that's a big deal. So some notes I have from Kent, just my own personal notes. I'm going to go through this randomly. So, um, you know, Darius had a mind that's weak in the hamstring. I ain't worried about it. People talking about Darius being lazy, don't even go there. Darius is on the sideline. I saw him doing the whole time focus on football stuff, talking with Jerry Hughes, this and that. And I understand it's their job to talk, to do football, do whatever, but we all have jobs. And if you've ever made jobs where you make good money, the money ain't keeping you working. Believe me, you got to want to do it. So I thought it was pretty tight seeing Darius fully attentive, locked in there, ready to roll. And Jerry Hughes is rolling with him. You know, they're just showing each other some stuff, some like little hand technique stuff. I could be, you know, right on the chest, shoulder, whatever. So, look. I'm just saying I see the guy working on the sideline, even though he's pulled a hammy. He looks focused. I don't know if it's a pull or a tweak. I don't know when he'll be back. I have no clue. I'm sure you could find out. Eric Turner probably knows. Hit him up on Twitter, Cover One Bills. Um, Sammy got a lot of reps today, like a lot of reps. They're very, 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 very in tune with Sammy, focused on Sammy. He looks to have a good relationship with everybody out there. Um, Sammy's working his ass off. Like, I will say that. He is working extremely hard. Extremely hard. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, number 31 had a touchdown, so that's Williams. You know, that was pretty cool. Uh, draft pick from last year. That was nice running back. So uh, that, that was something I saw happen. Some good plays out there. Sometimes I felt like, uh, I felt like the offense is completing – passes relatively decently at least the ball looks to be thrown in the right spot maybe out of my mind i don't know at least from what i see is i see a lot of completed balls um if you read some reports out there it looks like uh, i i did notice that zay jones and, and holmes have been swapping out with sammy as the number one so it's nice to see zay jones out there nice to see andre holmes out there andre holmes is a big 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 boy he is tall he is tall um, supposed to catch up with him sometime soon. I'm hoping to catch him on here. Uh, the pads were on today. Pretty cool. Um, so I did notice one thing, another random thought. We don't have a tight end under 6'3", and that should go without saying, right? You know, like you want to tell a tight end, yada, yada, yada. Um, so Sean McDermott said it today. Today is the, he said it in his opening morning press conference, which I was at. Uh, if you missed the Periscope, go on my Twitter on Periscope, and uh, you'll see the live video up there. So please, again, if you are not following me on Twitter, fan on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Super active during the day on Twitter and Instagram because it's just the fastest to upload stuff with a quick thought. Um, the Facebook page just kind of becomes a cluttered mess, and you got to click through a bunch of stuff. But whatever channel you prefer... You hit me up, and I'll be more active there. But either way, it's always Twitter and Instagram first. Uh, if you got my number, don't shoot me a text. I mean, you can. I like you. Uh, but you are weary of getting screenshot and posted for Good Bills Talks. So don't say anything stupid. Uh, anyways, you can. So um, the, big, the big thing I noticed, too, is Peterman looks all right. I feel like the quarterbacks look all right. Um, Tyrod Taylor... I'm pretty impressed with Tyrod Taylor. The kid's laser focused. He signed every single autograph at the practice. So I hope that you people listening. Sorry, Tyrod, if you got like a longer line now. But like Tyrod Taylor stayed and signed every single thing he could find. Like I was one of the last people walking around the field house or walking around the field just seeing who I can get in touch with. It seems like the access is incredible. Um so Again, mind blown being out there. It was crazy, but so I got to see like the inner workings on how people work, their work ethic, how they interact with fans. It's pretty cool. Lorenzo Alexander signed a hell of a lot of autographs. If you don't know, his podcast is also on the Grandstand Sports Network. So please, again, GrandstandSportsNetwork.com. Make sure you check it out. You really like it. Trust me. Eric Turner is like beating me with the stick. Where's the podcast, bro? Like I'm about to blow my brains out. I'm not making a podcast. Eric done dead. I'm out. Chill out. Before I send my phone to this window. So, you know, when you are when you go rogue and you have orders, 
You can't just go rogue. So here I am, and I'm excited. So I'm going to be catching up with Nate Geary sometime from WGR soon. Um, we'll be shooting the skinny. I will be back out at camp on Tuesday morning if you're listening to this. I might have a podcast before Tuesday morning with somebody else. So, again, please keep checking it out. Um, I, again, I'm looking at my random notes here. Uh, LaShawn McCoy saw him spread out wide. Pretty dope. Like what they're doing. Use them up. Use these guys. I want to see these players actually used. What are they good at? Raw Dog Nick O'Leary, second tight end in there constantly. It looks like that's his spot. He looks to be doing well. I'm stoked. So a lot of two tight end sets. Expect that this year. LaShawn McCoy, even first rep yesterday out the box with against people on the field. Or uh, first day of camp was just nuts. So LaShawn McCoy is a real deal. And it's crazy being on the field with these players because you think, oh, he's small. He's small. And I get it. You know what I mean? You look at these measurables and you get a, a size, a, a picture to the face, et cetera, et cetera. But I mean, like, LaShawn McCoy does not look dinky to me. He's listed at 210, 511. All right. So in cleats, he's what, six foot? I don't know. But um, he looks tall as hell to me. Or he's bigger than I thought. You know, it's, it's different when you're right next to him. Uh, I caught up with um, two players today, actually. I caught up with Bakari Rambo for a little bit. Uh, Bakari's stoked to be back in Buffalo. Uh, he was very professional with me, and he was very, um, very, very, very good to talk to. We talked some Southern football. He's like, I love playing playing ball here in Buffalo. It's like a college atmosphere. And um, it really... He really enjoys playing in Buffalo. He's happy to be back. He said Miami did not go well. Um, and for any Bills fan out there, you really did like what Bakari Rambo, Bakari Rambo brought to the table. And uh, he just said he just said what you would expect, which is uh, glad to be back in Buffalo, loves the Buffalo atmosphere. And he's just learning the system, doing his thing. He was not too specific. But uh, good attitude, very talkative to me, which, um, again, I'm a first-timer here. I've never seen these people. I'm, you know, I actually did get to say, hey, Mr. Pagula, today to Terry. Hey there. And as we walk by, you know, I never have, you know, I, I know I sound a little homerish right now, but it's kind of a big deal. Um, so all the gushing aside from my big day, it wasn't as big as yours most likely. But, um... You know, also I heard some some of the media scrum with Shaq Lawson, he, and uh, last year's weight was 280. I believe he's um, he's definitely down a little bit, but he put on healthy weight, so he's listed at 267, and he said he put on a lot of healthy weight. He does not look like the uh, like the baby pudge. No disrespect, Shaq. Don't kill me, but uh, he does. He, he just looks he looks good. He looks really good. But again, when you're injured and you have a whole, you know, the Bills really hid Shaq Lawson last year, and I like that. They didn't put him in the spotlight. They didn't allow him to be a magnet of negativity to get rushed back. They took their time with him. And I think the farther the season went along with Rex Ryan, they looked at it more like, okay, we might as well. But then again, is that true? Because you want to win at all costs, and you can make up whatever narrative you want. So maybe I just made something up. Um, now one guy I did catch up with that I do want to catch up with soon is, um, is really Santrell Henderson. Santrell Henderson is legit. He was getting a lot of the left tackle reps when Cordy Glenn was out. Um, so Cordy Glenn was back today and reports are Deion Dawkins had a little bit of a rough day. Um, so I believe he was rotating in on the right side today. So I got to check. I got to check. Um, but Sancho Henderson's a very interesting case. If you don't know, uh, I think it's out there. He he did have a, a surgery, obviously, last year. Um, I believe in January last year, he said. So, and it was super again on the DL. Um and it's a medical condition, so he doesn't, you know, you really don't talk to it, but it's out now. So, Santral has Crohn's, and I relate tightly to Crohn's. Uh, I remember this band I listened to, Glassjaw, Singer has Crohn's. 
Um, my friend's girlfriend has Crohn's. And when I heard Henderson got Crohn's and people are ready to tee off on it for weed or whatever the hell it is, I'm like, yo, why don't you chill out? So um, definitely won't talk to Central Henderson about that, just for the record. It's it's dumb not talking about that with him. But he's going to be in a podcast as far as, like, the weed talk. So he's going to be in a podcast, not going to talk about any of that, none of that past shit, um, because he looks good. He looks like a goddamn tree. Uh, he's he's a big dude. And I've loved the story of Sancho Henderson. I like the guys who who fall. Doug Whaley picked him up in the seventh round. He's been on the team a while. He's seen some coaching staffs. And what I really like about him is he keeps working, and he keeps sticking around. And he's got, a, I believe, a looming suspension. But I wouldn't be shocked if that got reduced even more, possibly. I mean, I don't know how you can or can't, so I'm just talking on my ass right now, but weed's a joke. You know that. I know that. It's 2017. Get over it. Um, You know, so it ain't painkillers, but it kills your pain. A little bit. Takes your mind off it, too. Um, so Henderson was great. We were talking and, uh, he says he's been eating a lot of meats and, and greens, a lot of meats and greens to keep the weight on because you got to figure you can't just, when you, you can't just eat, um, the way nutrition is going anyways, is we're cutting sugar out of our diets. We're cutting out breads. We're cutting out a lot of gluten. Well, when you, when you have Crohn's, you can't eat a lot of that shit anyways. So I can't imagine being a football player, having to have weight quote unquote weight on while also taking in healthy fats because we all know now fats are healthy you need healthy fats so it is what it is um he's got to eat clean food and somehow keep the mass on what's they tell you he's building just like Shaq Lawson he's building healthy weight and that's very good and um at the same time, you want to have a healthy amount of body fat because there's been studies out there. I'm not going to dive into it because I'm just digressing here. But they've actually opened up studies where is it healthier to have a little bit of body fat on you because you could take a little bit more impact in certain situations. I mean, if you look at some MMA fighters, some boxers, there's definitely like some padding there. At the same time, we look at it and I've always looked at it like, well, if you got rid of that padding, you'd have maybe some more speed. Or more X or whatever you're trying to do. So I'm stoked to see what Henderson can bring to the table. He's a young kid. He works hard. He's hung around this this, this whole time. I mean, he's had a lot of reasons to throw in the towel. He's missed a lot of games. I am very stoked to have him playing. 6'7", 331. He's in his fourth year. He's a young dude. You know what I mean? We got a few more years of Sancho Henderson. Injuries happen like anything. This guy is vital. Um, the line today, the interior was pretty much uh, Miller at the right guard, Eric Wood at the center, and Incognito at the left guard. Um, I got to watch Richie Incognito run to the porta potty, and I don't know how he wedged in there and wedged out because his football pads are like the size of goalposts. So whatever car, clown car, practice he had getting out of, he clearly used it here. Um, I don't know because I, I pack a lot of things in my CRV and I somehow escape it. So I understand what it's like, Eric or Richie. But it's like, man, it was just crazy watching this guy and his pads go inside this porta potty. And he's like bigger than it. And somehow he came out, tried it back out, threw the helmet on. Back in for a rep. Like, really? Hey, that's the sight I saw today, okay? Just telling you. It was a good practice. It was a good day. Beautiful clouds. My hair was tied back. I want to give a shout-out again to Shades and Shorts. Uh, we talked to upper management. We got shorts there. So that was cool. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I guess that's pretty much it. I love the atmosphere. Had a good time. Uh, the, the, the team is working. They looked a little bit more tired today than day one, obviously. Day one, they looked like they were fired out of a cannon. Uh, what I do like is I like this practice schedule. I was there at about 7.30 hunting to get uh, uh, the passes and the credentials. Um, 
And the press conference for McDermott's already 815. He started 820. Um, and I don't care if he's late or not. Other people are bitching about it. I don't care. But it seems together. That's all I can say. It seems together. You have nothing to do right now but have some hope. If you're listening to this, don't overanalyze everything right now. We all want to. We want to see what the little reps are, this and that. What I'm looking for, too, if you're trying to watch a quarterback position, say quarterback is your thing. Always worry about being able to see the touch of the ball. Are they leading the receiver? Is the ball going into the right spots? How is the receiver catching the ball? I had this conversation with Nate Geary on the sideline and how receivers are catching the ball. Nate Geary played quarterback in college, so I trust Nate. Um, very interesting to, if you hone in on something at camp and just kind of travel from position group to position group, I was caught in like a mosh where I'm like in between. Um, they had two things going on opposite ways from the center point of the field. So I'm hearing cheers and I'm seeing like Watkins run down the field. I'm hearing cheers and I'm seeing another guy the other way. Um, so I guess Shorts is the real deal this year at camp too. He's very consistent, undrafted free agent. Um, so look, look at the quarterbacks. If you want something to do, everybody looks at the quarterback. Just see where they're placing the ball. I will swear up and down. I will swear up and down, and I will stand by this, and there's nothing you can do to have me prove it to you. But I swear Jeff Tool is way more accurate than E.J. Manuel first year, first week of camp. Like, way more accurate than E.J. Manuel. I thought Jeff Tool got a raw deal <laughs> with that. He had some bad luck with that pick six in the end zone against Kansas City. And there was a whole Steve Johnson debacle, whether he was open or he could have done more or didn't chase somebody down, I think, or whatever it was. But uh, I'm stoked. Nathan Peterman looks like he gets it. He doesn't look lost. He's got good touch on the ball. TJ Yates is dropping the ball between the zones. He clearly knows the offense. He clearly knows how to read the defense. The, the, it's just like the, the timing. The ball's out of the hands. Maybe I'm nuts. They're just in shorts. Yeah, they're they're they still got red jerseys on. You're not hitting the quarterback. It, it's so hard for me to judge quarterbacks because it's a weird it's a weird sport where you have all off season to, to to prepare for these opponents. And I don't care if you got a rookie quarterback, which sometimes has an advantage for three four games, or a new offense, which might have an advantage for three four games, or a new defense, etc. But eventually, the league catches up, and you got to keep adding a new wrinkle. That's what makes Bill Belichick Belichick is he always has a wrinkle. And a lot of guys are caught up and working about working on things. Where, and, and that's what you got to do. But Bill Belichick always adds a wrinkle, something you, you, you haven't seen. And he might do something totally different. So he pretty much, I think, just works with what he gives you. We've seen it with the Bills and so many times. I mean, okay, the Bills have run a defense that is very – fast with tweeners back in the day uh with Shane Gailey and and it didn't work out too well I remember they ended up putting Scott out there uh was it Bernard Scott they put Bernard Scott out there to play uh defensive back and safety like the hybrid or, or uh linebacker hybrid role and Tom Brady just ran he's just like all right fine screw it you're gonna put that little guy in the field we'll just run the ball for like 300 yards so that's what they did it's a chess game. It ain't a stats game. Everybody wants to get hung up on stats and live and die by the stats. Stay as positive through camp as long as possible. That's all I got to say. Not, you know, at least stay objective. Give the team a chance. Don't crush the team. Don't freak out. Give these guys a team to, some time to heal. This is the first time in practice in a long time taking contact. It ain't like it used to be. And I want to argue that maybe sometimes it's better to have some of the hits on the body to toughen your ass up a little bit. But who am I? I'm not a football player. I'm just going by what old football players would say. At the same time, we have super athletes now. We have super speed. We have super nutrition. Um, I mean, Sancho Henderson was talking about doing hot Pilates. And that's rad. And that was the question I have for these players. I'm going to be asking a lot. Is like, what do you do for nutrition? What do you do for, for your day? Because I'm trying to pick up yoga personally to clear the head. Also trying to pick up yoga to get more flexible. There's things I cannot do, like anybody who's tried yoga, but I'm very stiff. And 
with the with the NFL the way it is, and with everybody going more organic and really taking the preservatives out of their diet, um, and more holistic experiences with 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 food, body, mind, body, and temple, whatever you want to say here, uh, you know, I'm pretty stoked to see what the future of nutrition is because I hope these players can last longer. I hope they can even expand rosters one day, and it just sucks that. We are so fast to label injury pl- prone to these players, but if you look at a guy like Sammy Watkins, dude had a screw in his foot, screw loosened up. Is that his fault? He's an elite receiver. That means he has elite pressure on his feet, right? Okay, it's called explosion. The kid's a monster. Look how thick he is. He's the real deal. Don't believe in injury prone. We're not hearing about anybody not being able to go and practice and being a weenie about it. Until we hear that, then we'll hear injury prone. And sometimes things just happen. Like Derrick Rose is always hurt. Do you think Derrick Rose wants to recover from an ACL like 3 million times? No. <laughs> because if you do that for 10 years, 6 times, that's 6 years of your career. And then next thing you know, younger guys come in and they believe in the potential. And it's like, well, I have potential too. Where to go? So that's, that happens with players all the time. That's why a guy like Andre Holmes is interested to me. That guy has had to grind his whole career. So... I hope to catch up with him. I like to get his uh, his, his words on the grind. What's he do for nutrition? How's he like the work schedule, et cetera, et cetera. This is Numb Bills Fan Podcast. Thanks for checking in for day three. Don't forget, Monday is the launch, grandstandsportsnetwork.com. Pretty stoked. And brought to you by numbillsfan.com. Subscribe to this on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. Numb Bills Fan podcast search for it find it subscribe send me a message on twitter on facebook on instagram shoot me an email if you so feel dave at numbillsfan.com also i will be at camp tuesday check out the videos and pictures and stuff i get a little artsy so uh you know you want to go crazy looking at little pictures of the clouds that i put with bills players in the background go for it follow my instagram also uh cover1.net got some good content with Kevin Masari from there. Um, check that podcast out. There's just a couple days ago. It's camp day one. And also, don't forget, GrandstandSportsNetwork.com. This thing all drops Monday. This might even be on it right now when this is played. So, I, you know, expect. And you got to keep checking it because I'm probably going to have a lot of content during, during the month. So, Every week, make sure you refresh your feed probably every other day because I might drop in a quick nugget. I thought I'd do a quick 15. I'm rolling on 30 minutes here. I don't know how I did this. I need to stop talking. Holy shit. Okay, so, yeah, GrandstandSportsNetwork.com. Check that out. Uh, a lot of great shows on there. Rock Power Report. Lorenzo Alexander has a podcast that's going to be up on there. Also, Beyond the Blade. You want to get your Sabres talk in there? Get going. Also, I'll have more podcasts coming about the NFL. I have my friend Sean Timmerman coming out there, coming on. Giants fans, this is your guy. You have any Giants material you want to hear about, tweet you down with JPP. Google it. You'll find him on Twitter. And uh, you down with JPP. That's who it is, Sean Timmerman. He's actually family, but he knows his shit. And we're co-op fantasy partners, and we just have years of just ball busting. So it's always a good time with Sean. He is going to start a Giants podcast coming up soon as well. Very, very stoked for Sean. His shit's together. He's got a real job. Jobby, job, job. He is the father to my step-nephew, who's a good kid. I don't know how that happened, um, but, like, it did. So proud of Sean and my stepsister, Dan- ses- uh, stepsister Danielle Moon. Um, so, like, thank you for, uh, you know, being good parents, shit. It's kind of cool. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So, anyways... Yeah, just make sure you keep tuning in. NumbillsFan.com, NumbillsFan, GrandstandSportsNetwork.com, and don't forget PunchRunkSports.com, at PunchRunk on Twitter. Subscribe to their podcast, CoverOne.net's podcast, Rock Power Reports podcast, if you like Chris and Drew. Check those guys out. Um, obviously, Cover One has a phenomenal podcast, so you got to gotta subscribe to that one. If you like good opinion, um, make it happen. That said, I'm out. I'm David Palermo. Find me everywhere. No, I'm Bills fan. Any suggestions or anything, comments, let me know. I'll be at camp on Tuesday, and I'm very excited. And honestly, uh, to anybody listening, this is this was like one of the biggest day of my, days of my life. I could not sleep last night, and it was huge to be there. I barely got any sleep. 
Um, been tired. I took like a power nap real quick. I was like the last one walking around the place. So they're cleaning up and everything. I'm trying to find people to talk to still. So, um, again, just keep up with me. I'm doing the best job I possibly can to keep content up to date, but it's very unpredictable. I might drop something at like one in the morning on these suckers. So numbillsfan.com, check it out. Also, the DJ is really cool. The DJ is really cool. So, all right, I'll see you. Take care. Numbillsfan.com. Bye.